Hi, everyone. Huh? Have you seen the acclaimed film Joker that will probably win several Oscars this year? Yeah. When you bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? Arthur Fleck's story is breathtaking, but he's still a fictional hero. Unfortunately, there are people like him in real life, and sometimes they are even worse. Some of them commit atrocities because of childhood traumas, lack of money, or a simple desire to become famous. Today, we're going to tell you about the seven most dangerous criminals in history and find out how some of them managed to stay free. Dawood Ibrahim Some people consider this guy the godfather of the godfathers. He would have frightened any Italian mafioso, even when Costa Nostra was at its peak. The FBI began looking for him in 1993, when he was connected to several crimes in Mumbai, in which almost 260 people died. The US agents worked hard to get the Pakistani authorities to extradite the criminal, but their attempts failed. According to some intelligence reports, Pakistani officials actually helped Dawood escape abroad, probably to some Asian country. Ibrahim was born in 1955, and his criminal life began in India's slums. He grew up in a poor family, dropped out of school, and decided to earn a living on his own. At first, he worked as a mechanics assistant and as a taxi driver, but soon he was attracted by dirty money because honest work did didn't bring him a decent salary. Ibrahim was not stopped by the fact that his father worked in the police, even though he was just a head constable. He started with small frauds, such as counterfeiting products or pickpocketing. But soon, the Wood and his friends took things seriously and founded their own company. This firm, called D Company, was involved in a variety of violations, from trading illegal substances to contract killing. Today, it is still run by Ibrahim. It started with petty crimes such as car theft, but soon became a transnational, multinational corporation, even opening branches in other countries. By the way, Dawood also worked with Bollywood for many years. sponsoring a large number of films in India. Despite the close attention of intelligence services around the world, this company is still functioning. This is largely due to the false documents that Ibrahim received in various countries around the world. Today, a reward of $25 million is offered for his capture. However, the criminal is still at large. According to some reports, he's living in Australia. Matteo Messina Denaro you thought stories of the Sicilian Mafia exist only in movies? Unfortunately, you're wrong. Good. This criminal was raised following the Mafia rules because he was born into a Mafia family. Matteo committed his first crime at the age of 18. Today, he is 57 years old and is credited with the death of more than 50 victims. He began to earn importance in the Sicilian Mafia in the early 90s when he got rid of his father's main rival and his girlfriend. He wasn't even deterred by the fact that she was three months pregnant. It is believed that Matteo has also been involved in a number of larger cases, such as organizing crimes involving multiple victims in some Italian cities. In any case, he has been wanted for more than 20 years, and in 2002, he was sentenced to life imprisonment in absentia. However, this did not prevent him from reaching the top ranks of the Mafia and becoming the new godfather of Casa Nostra in 2006. On his way to this position, Matteo, by the way, did not spare the the law officers as well. He is accused of having participated in the death of Judge Giovanni Falcone and his associate, Deputy Prosecutor Palermo Paolo Borsalino, who had become symbols of the anti-mafia campaign in Italy. Over the last few years, the police have detained dozens of Matteo's accomplices and relatives, but the leader himself remains at large. Moreover, even under these conditions, he continues to lead Europe's main criminal organization. Some rumors even suggest that Matteo underwent facial transplant operation and continues to live in Sicily, controlling the economy of the entire province. No one knows for sure whether this is true or not. Felician Cabuga 
This criminal story is pretty ambiguous. On the one hand, he is considered the richest man in the African state of Rwanda. On the other hand, he is responsible for the most terrible tragedy in the country's history, the extermination of a whole ethnic group. We're talking about the massacres of the Tutsi people during the 1994 Civil War. According to various estimates, between half a million and a million people died on Rwandan territory at that time. That is to say, approximately 20% of the population. The history of the conflict between the two opposing peoples, Hutu and Tutsi, goes back several decades. But 25 years ago, it was at its worst. Everything happened after the death of the then president of Rwanda, Juvenal Habyarimana, in a plane crash. Kabuga, who was already an influential businessman at the time, blamed the Tutsi people on the radio and called for their extermination. In many ways, his words, as well as the active financing of the crimes, led to the massacre. Its ruthlessness broke all records. Technically, Kabuga himself himself didn't kill anyone. However, the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda judged him to be the mastermind behind the massacre. Then the Rwandan authorities did not dare to arrest the criminal, and he hurriedly fled the country. Today he is 84 years old, and, according to some reports, he is hiding in Switzerland. The FBI will pay $5 million for his capture. John Wayne Gacy Let's talk about the Joker again. Perhaps this man's story is much more terrible than DC's sensational and depressing drama. By the way, John was the prototype of another famous character, the terrible Pennywise from Stephen King's novel It. <laughs> Because of his elaborate atrocities, the American press nicknamed John the Killer Clown, all because this chubby regular man was an exemplary citizen and a community volunteer, who worked as a clown at children's parties. And in his spare time, he looked for victims in the streets of the city, invited them to his house, and did terrible things to them. A total of 33 young men were victims of his brutal actions. What can push a man to commit such terrible crimes? That's right, childhood trauma. Experience shows that almost all problems come from there, and serial killers are are often abused children. John's father suffered from various addictions and constantly beat his wife in outbursts of rage. Yeah. What's worse, the parents almost didn't care about John, so they didn't even realize that a friend of the father had committed physical violence against the child. In addition, the bullying he suffered at school made him cruel, turning him into one of the most terrible criminals of the last century. John was in jail several times, the first time when he was 25. The guy served 18 months and was released early. Shortly after his return to freedom, he committed his first murder accidentally. But he couldn't stop after that. It wasn't until many years later that the the police finally managed to link the many mysterious disappearances of the young people with Gacy. He was sentenced to death in 1980, but was only executed in 1994 due to his numerous appellations. Rodney Alcala Another serial killer, who in 2010 was sentenced to death in the United States, did not strike anyone as psychologically unstable. Here's Johnny! <laughs> Moreover, it was with his charisma that he managed to win the trust of his numerous victims. According to various data, the number of his murders could reach 130. They were all young boys and girls. The ex-photographer lured them into his studio with his charm, then tortured them, brutally killed them, and photographed them. However, it took 30 years to catch the perpetrator and prove his guilt. Good job. Really good job. The reason was that for a long time, the investigators did not find enough evidence to charge Alcala with his crimes. It was only at the beginning of this century that there was a breakthrough in this case, thanks to new DNA technologies. Alcala was sentenced to death by lethal injection, but in 2013, the sentence was changed to life imprisonment due to amendments to New York State criminal laws. Lonnie David Franklin Jr. Lonnie Franklin Jr. from California, a postman and garbage collector, is another clear proof that evil often hides in the most ordinary people. Neighbors said he was a sociable person and always helped. Good morning! Morning! Good morning! However, a serial killer was hiding behind that smile. Between 1985 and 2007, he killed at least 15 if not more than 20 people. Most of them were young girls. The turning point in the criminal case against Lonnie came from the testimony of one of his victims, Laura. Fortunately, the girl managed to escape from his car after he shot her several times. 
Despite the enormous amount of evidence of Lonnie's guilt, the man never confessed his crimes, accusing the witnesses of lying. Although he was sentenced to death three years ago, the offender is still on death row in one of California's prisons, as well as hundreds of other dangerous criminals. The fact is that the state, like the entire country, has been debating the abolition of the death penalty for many years. As a result, this form of punishment has not been carried out in California prisons since 2006, even though such sentences are still imposed. Andre Chikatilo this is another ruthless killer who became known for his atrocities all over the world. Before his first murder in 1978, Chikatilo had a normal Soviet man's life. He studied, obtained several degrees, served in the army, got married, and had children. At some point, however, something went wrong. One day, in his own words, Andre accidentally killed a nine-year-old girl. And since then, he has not been able to stop. By the way, for his first crime, another criminal, Alexander Kravchenko, was wrongfully executed. In the following years, up to 19 1990, Chikaltalo killed more than 50 people, many of whom were minors. The criminal found his victims on the street, offered them to see something interesting, and lured them into the forest, where he committed his terrible crimes. Finally, after a long investigation, Chikaltalo was arrested on November 20, 1990. He himself confessed all his atrocities and the court quickly sentenced him to death. The killer tried to ask for forgiveness from the then president of Russia, Boris Yeltsin, but the request was rejected. On February 14, 1994, Chikaltalo was executed in Novocherkesk prison.